Ken Davenport is a Tony award-winning Broadway producer. Currently, he's got four shows on Broadway right now, which considering Broadway only has about 20 theaters, is huge. He's been featured everywhere, he's won Tony Awards, and he was kind enough to come on the show to talk about producing. So here are my main takeaways from that conversation with Ken Davenport. Ken said there's two types of producers. In that there's a chairman of the board and there are board members, right? So there's someone whose idea was to start the company and then sometimes brings people in around them to help see that company uh, to fruition. When I'm talking to somebody like Ken Davenport, who's produced winners over and over again, I'm interested to know how they think about those winners or how they think about new projects. So I asked him, how can you tell if a project's going to be good in advance? Listen, it's like, uh, does a painter know, did Da Vinci know the Mona Lisa was going to be good before he got to the smile? Who knows? He probably didn't even think it was that good or as good as it became even when he finished. You never really know. And I'm a big believer that the ultimate arbiter of what is quote unquote good is the audience. Ken is the first Broadway producer to implement dial testing. So we talked about that. Depends on the type of show that it is. Obviously, if it's a comedy, which getting the band back together is, you're listening for laughter, energy. You're also looking, listening for rustling in seats. I'm also just watching and listening to the show. Are there gaps? I actually was the first Broadway producer to incorporate dial testing into the development of material. So the same technology used in debates or in movies I've used on two shows where I put a hundred people in audiences with dials. And as the show has, has gone on, they've worked the dials left, right, and like it, don't like it, et cetera, which is real fascinating to look at. And it's actually very, very helpful. It's interesting because he also knows not to get too into the testing. He knows there's a certain point to stop the dial testing. Otherwise, the show will be too optimized and possibly ruined. And of course, you got a guy that's on Broadway, so I want to talk about how you get your show onto Broadway. What's the actual process? Well, it's about product. It's about the right product, product that you believe, that theater owners believe people want to see. It's about relationships, and it's about you know, not giving up until they give you the keys. Ken raises a lot of money for these Broadway plays, so we talked about how Broadway is booming. Broadway is going through a real boom time right now. And so more people are becoming interested in it than ever before. T 10 years ago, 20 years ago, the movie companies weren't involved. Now all the movie companies have developmental, theatrical development arms where they're developing their movies for Broadway because there's a lot of money can be made here. You talk about your industry, the movies, you know, Google around. There's an article where Disney says Lion King will make them more money than Star Wars. Universal says that Wicked will make them more money than the Jurassic Park franchise. Uh, so there's a lot of money to be made here. And this we're, we're in a gold rush time right now. And I wanted to dig into his career path. So I asked him, how can someone build a career like Ken's? The thing about producing, you know, look, I started as a production assistant. I then was a stage manager. I worked for an agent for a little while. Then I was a company manager. Like I learned a little bit of every aspect of the business. So there's nothing that beats that, right? Like you're learning. I sat around advertising tables with some of the best producers in the business, learning how they market shows. And I company managed shows. I learned all the labor regulations. Like I, I I learned this stuff in and out. That said, I think that's the best way to do it. For most of these entertainment guys, and we've got a really nice stack of them coming up, it's clear that they take a long-term view toward their career, but it's also clear that they bury the failures. So you see a guy like Ken Davenport, you see all of the projects he's done well, and then they never mention any of the failures, which is amazing from a long-term point of view and should de-risk everything. On that note, we talked about the importance of finishing projects. Yeah, there's no question. You know, you, it's perseverance, it's getting to the finish line, and it's very easy to get distracted by what's on Netflix or what's on your phone or social media. But if you want something bad enough, you're just going to get it done. You know, you're just going to got to finish it. And that may not be the one that leads to your Academy Award or a million dollars, but it will lead to something. The other thing is that most people will tell you that whether it's artists or entrepreneurs, they may be passionate about their product, or their project, but they don't know that that's going to be the one that makes a hundred million dollars. They're always like, oh wait, people like that? Wow. It's just getting on the train of just like producing, making stuff, spitting it out there. Like this one? Great. Don't like this one? Great. Just keep going until you eventually hit oil. And then for people that are investing in Broadway, I thought this insight was very interesting about the number of Broadway plays that actually make money. 
my hit rate, you know, average on Broadway, one out of five shows recoup their investment. Uh, I'm about a little over two, two out of five. So I'm, I'm beating the street. I'm very happy to see. One in five is a good number. And as an investor, that means you should invest in at least five Broadway plays. I haven't gotten a similar number on movies, maybe because there are way more variables than a Broadway production. You've got 22 theaters in Broadway versus the entire world watching movies. So there's so many different things that could go wrong. It's interesting how predictable that one in five number is for Ken. And then I asked him, should you have one project going or multiple projects? What's the best way to approach creation like that? It's why you have to have multiple projects going on at once. It's uh, Cy Coleman, celebrated composer, Broadway, used to say you gotta plant a lot of seeds because you never know which one's gonna sprout first. And that's the way it is. You know, I have two shows, I'm lead producing two shows on Broadway right now. I have two other shows that my name is on. Uh, so I have a lot there. I have four or five shows in development right now. I took two meetings this week with people about other ideas, like a, the next idea. So you're constantly looking. I love hearing that because a lot of artists will only do one thing and they'll have their one show or their one movie that they're trying to make for years and it's a trap. So it's great to hear from Ken Davenport, acclaimed Broadway producer, that you need to have multiple projects going. Then we talked about how to deal with fear and doubt and failure. The point I wanted to hit on was as his career gets bigger, he must have more people looking at him. So the amount of eyes on him grows tremendously, especially the more Broadway plays that you have going, the more people and the more money and the more everything is going to be on your shoulders. So I wanted to know how he deals with that. Look, you're gonna have those moments where you're gonna like, oh God, what if this doesn't work out? But that's when I usually go, okay, if it doesn't work out, well, things haven't worked out before, you've been fine. And they may hurt in the moment, but later you're fine and something good happens as a result. Uh, so there's that. And then the other, like one of my favorite things to do from a real practical analytical perspective, because I think a lot of first timers out there are like, if my first project fails, I, that's it. It's over. It'll never, I'll never happen for me. Especially I get this because I consult and coach a lot of people. And one of the common things I'm coaching them on, and I even have a course on this is raising money. And the common thing I hear is, but oh my God, if my if I raise money and it doesn't work, they'll never ever invest with me ever. I don't find that to be true at all. If you're honest, if you explain the risks going in, if you work really hard, then yeah, some people may not invest with you again, but most of the time people are investing in people rather than projects. So you'll find that you keep them. Then we talked about flops projects that don't go well. Listen, all your listeners should do the same thing. If they're having a moment, they're either afraid something they're doing might fail or they have something that's failed, is pick a hero, someone that you really look up to in the business, and then go back and look at their IMDB page. I guarantee you, you're gonna find flops there. You're gonna find disasters. Everybody has them. Whether it's producers, directors, actors, they've all gone through some horrible period. Like it happens all the time. They get through it, you'll get through it. You just gotta keep going. And he left us with this piece of advice that no one cares more about your projects than you do. No one cares about your own projects more than you do. Put that passion to work. There's a link to Ken Davenport's stuff in the description below. He's got a bunch of courses if you're into Broadway at all. If you're into producing, I would listen to a few episodes of The Producer's Perspective. My favorite is the one with the founder of Sleep No More. If you want the exact client questions we use on call number one to qualify and sell to our clients, the link is down in the description below. And if you wouldn't mind thinking of one person that would like this video and sharing it with them, that would help the channel out a ton. Also, if you run a digital agency and you want help getting more enterprise clients, check out experiment27.com. I'm Alex Berman. Thanks.